Hi everybody and welcome back to Stone Magpie for another Whip and Chat. Thank you so much to everybody who voted on the survey for which canvas you'd like to see this time. I know it was short notice and I only opened it for a couple of hours. So thank you for taking time to do that. You did have me worried for a little while. I thought it was going to be my choice that... Um, a lot of you voted for either canvas and um, I thought I'll take Monty out for a walk and then see what the result is when I get back in. And some people had voted to see the spring stream canvas. So that's what I am doing today. I did do quite a bit of work on it last weekend as well. So I've progressed quite a bit. If you follow me on Instagram, you may well have seen some updated pictures that I put on there last weekend. Um, but don't worry, if you don't, I will show you the full canvas at the end of today's whip and chat so you can see how much has been done. And um, yeah, especially on the right hand side of the canvas over there, um, it'll be good to see. I don't think I posted a picture actually of the right hand side so even if you are on my Instagram you might not have seen that so if you'd like to follow me there it is stonemagpie11 and um, yeah give me a follow. I hope you're all well this week I hope you've had a good week it's zoomed for me this week at work honestly um, saying that though I did have Friday off <laughs> So I did another four day week. Honestly, next week when I do five days again, it might be a bit of a shock because we had the Jubilee weekend where we did a three day week and then I did a four day week. So next week will be my first five day week for a while. I'm sure I'll cope. <laughs> I'm sure I'll cope. So I did start this section a little bit just before filming. Um, so I have had a bit of a head start on it. And as you can see, this is sort of the side of the cabin. So they are mainly bushes and trees here. And I'm just filling in this big bit of um, area. And then we'll go on to the in-betweeny bits during the whip and chat. We may even get a little bit of the cabin done because this canvas is a bit quicker than the elation one. So I do hope to actually get the section fully completed for you today, which I've not managed to do on an elation whip and chat. I have got Monty sitting next to me and um, he's a little bit unsettled because Nick is currently away. He's gone to see a gig in Sweden this weekend. Hence why I... Oh, here he goes. Oh no, I'm not... I'm hoping we don't have too much of this today. And I do apologise if it does happen. But as I say, he's really missing Nick. And it's quite sweet on a morning... Um, when I open the doors of a morning, he's going straight into the bedroom to look for Nick. I shouldn't mention his name, should I? Because it gets you all upset. Okay. I'm not going to mention his name, so I'll call him N instead of, you know, his full name. You'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, he's really missing him. Um... So I needed to take Friday off work because I needed to make sure that Monty wasn't left on his own too long. Anyway, it was a nice excuse to have a day off as well. So it's just been me and Monty this weekend. We've been on a few dog walks and um, yeah, this morning's dog walk though was not relaxing um, because as I was walking, hopefully you, you know where I mean, if you've seen some of my videos before, I was walking past the sheep field this morning and all the sheep were there and I could see through the bushes 
that the horses in the next field, which used to be the cow field and is now the horse field, they were running round really fast. And I thought, oh, well, that's quite unusual. Normally they're just, you know, grazing. And, um, and then I spotted a couple. It was a man and a lady with ro carrying like rope. I presume like a lasso, I'm not quite sure. I'm not very horsey, so I'm not sure of the terminology. <laughs> anyway, um, they were carrying a rope. And by the time I'd passed all the bushes, they had actually hooked or um, looped um, the rope round the neck of two of the horses, two of the big horses, and they were just standing nicely next to these people. I wish I'd been there to see the actual lassoing of the horse because they must have been so quick and clever to do it in the time that I walked past the bushes. Um, so they started to lead these horses away. Now, there were, there were five, well, I'd say four horses in the field this morning and one Shetland pony. And they led three of the horses away. So they left one of the big horses and the Shetland pony in the field. Well, as they got to the top of the hill, like the brow of the hill, the horse that was being left behind, the big one, had a complete tantrum. Um, so it did a massive whinny and then trotted up the hill after them, out of sight, over the brow of the hill, and into the next sort of holding field, I'll call it. Um, so basically followed them up the hill. And it made me worry because he was making such a racket. And I thought, is something not right here? Or is he just in a bad temper because he's being left behind? I wasn't quite sure, um, as I say, I'm not that horsey, so I, I couldn't pick up the signals of what the horse was trying to tell me. <laughs> um, but it did worry me a lot and I thought, do you know, I've just accepted that this couple own these horses and I've just basically stood and watched them lead these three horses away. And what if they're, um, let's call them horse nappers, I don't know what you would, I don't know, do you normally call horse stealers? I don't know. What if they, you know, were dressed in the garb and just casually walked into this field and took the horses away and the other horse was really upset about it? And I've just witnessed it and, you know, not batted an eyelid. Maybe I should have taken a photograph of them, you know. <laughs> I do have a bit of an overactive imagination sometimes, I think. <laughs> you know, like one of these, maybe I'm going to turn into Miss Marple or someone. <laughs> anyway, it was upsetting seeing this horse being so upset. So then I thought, well, maybe he was cross because he had plans to play with his mates today and then suddenly they weren't there. Maybe he was annoyed that he was being left behind. Um, or maybe he was actually worried about where his friends were going. So that's the conclusion I've come to. So all the way around the walk, which you may well have seen with the bumble tree and all of that area, um, I could hear this horse whinnying. Oh, it, honestly, I was quite moved by it and a little bit upset and, and a bit worried for this horse. So it wasn't a very relaxing walk for us this morning. And as I got to the top of the hill, past the bumble tree and up the hill, um, opposite the church, there's like a kissing gate, which is like a small field. And then it gets to the field where the horses stay. And as we got up there, the horse was, oh, the horse was stood at the gate, looking over the gate for his friends. Honestly, I was just like, oh, this horse is breaking my heart. <laughs> um, so when he saw us, he obviously thought, maybe he thought I was 
one of the people um, and started neighing a lot and sort of stamped his foot a little bit. So I thought, well, I can't really go up to it. One, because I don't really know the signals, so I wouldn't want to put myself in danger. Plus, and I'm sure he wasn't dangerous, um, but plus I had Monty with me, and so I didn't know whether Monty might upset him even more. So we walked on and we walked home, listening to this horse all the way home. Mm. Anyway, so it bothered me this morning and I thought, right, I'll get some jobs done and then I'll have some lunch and I'll take Monty out again and we'll go and see if the horse is all right. <laughs> So that's what I did. I did some jobs. I put my survey on YouTube and um, yeah, had some lunch, which was very nice and took Monty out again. So Monty and I were going to go to the cricket ground and have a walk there instead and then go and check on the horse and come home. However, there was cricket on at the cricket ground today, so I decided to turn round and go the other way. Sort of opposite the way, sort of opposite the walk that I normally do with him. So um, we walked around the church and then down to the horse field. And when I got to the horse field, the horse was there chomping away at the grass and the little Shetland pony, who seemed oblivious to everything going on, to be honest, this Shetland pony did not give a fig about these horses being taken away and just stood eating the grass all the way through. So when I saw them after lunch as well, he was still eating the grass, you know, not caring, not a care in the world. And the bigger horse had settled down and was also grazing. So I'm hoping everything is fine. I'm hoping that the horses that were led away have either gone to a horse show or have gone on a long hack or something. Um, and when I take Monty out tomorrow morning, I'm hoping that they're all back and I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> I have sort of um, memorized what these two people looked like just in case they are horse nappers after all <laughs> oh dear honestly but how would you know how would you know if they were the owners of the horses i mean they looked horsey <laughs> with what they were wearing and you know but There's no security. Anyway, I'm trying not to worry about it anymore. The horse is fine in the field and I'll see tomorrow morning whether the other horses have been brought back and all is fine. So I need to put it out of my mind <laughs> for today. Yes, so N is in Sweden this weekend. This is Saturday as I'm recording. And um, he's gone to see a gig. He's gone to see Judas Priest with his friends. And um, he seems to be having a lovely time over there. He, does, he did say how expensive it is in Sweden. So for example, they stopped to have coffee and cake now, I do think they were in Stockholm at that time because they flew to Stockholm and then they're driving to wherever the gig is. Um, but I think they were in Stockholm and they stopped for a coffee and cake. So I suppose, you know, the major city would be expensive perhaps. Um, but they got, there's four of them, and they each got a cup of coffee and a cake Guess how much it cost? Go on, shout out and I'll tell me what you think and I'll tell you how much they paid and you can let me know in the comments whether you were anywhere close. So for four cups of coffee and four slices of cake, it cost, drum roll, 
80 pounds. 80 pounds. Wow. So, yeah, quite an expensive weekend I think they're going to have this weekend. But um, he'll make some good memories. Did you, do you think that's a lot? I think it's a lot, but as I say, it's a major city, isn't it? But yes, Monty's been so cute because, you know, he normally goes to work with N <laughs> and he normally does all the dog walks apart from a Sunday morning. So yeah, he's been a bit unsettled and looking for him every morning going into the bedroom is he back no not yet so he's back tomorrow night and i think monty's just going to be so excited when he sees him oh. but he's just having to put up with me doing it all for him He's the type of dog that um, when Nick's, oh, I've said his name, mm -mm -mm. when N's there, he will be all over him. He sits on the sofa and drapes himself over N all night if he's allowed to. <laughs> so I get that on a morning because he knows that I'm up early and N normally has a bit of a lie in. So I have him draped over me on a morning, but that's my lot. The rest of the day, it's all M. So I'm filling in a lot of the background. You can tell with this canvas, that um, there's a lot more of one colour in each area as opposed to the elation one, if you've watched that. So that's why it's a bit speedier. They are absolute opposites because this is a square and that is a round. And I am enjoying working on both so much. I think this one will be finished before elation, probably, unless um, unless I start, stop working on this one so much and just concentrate on the other one. But you'll see at the end how much of the canvas is actually completed when I do a further away camera angle for you. And I can't wait to show you all of the different bits that are completed now on this one. So I am rather pleased that you chose it. The sun's starting to come out again now. It was out earlier on today and then it got really cloudy, so much so that I brought my washing in because I really thought that it was going to start raining and that I would have to um, cut off the whip and chat and go and get all the washing in. So I brought it all in and the sun's back out. Oh, can't win. <laughs> <laughs> lots of birds tweeting outside as well so you might be able to hear them
tell you what I forgot to do though. Oh, I forgot to make myself a drink before starting. That's not usual, is it? So, I usually have a nice cup of tea beside me. I hope you've got a nice cup of a nice cup of tea or a nice cup of coffee or whatever your tipple is. <laughs> really, I should have glasses of water next to me, shouldn't I? Especially now that it's getting a bit warmer. I think I need to change it up. I know I don't drink enough water. So I might have to um, start doing that instead. You may have to start telling me off if um, I still have cups of tea beside me. <laughs> Make me. I don't mind drinking water. I just prefer tea. <laughs> but I know I don't drink enough water, so it would be a good practice to get into. I've actually started taking a water bottle to work with me now too, um, to sip on during the day, because at work we get, officially, we get um, a tea break in the morning at half past 10 for 15 minutes. And then we have our lunch, we have half an hour for lunch, and then in the afternoon, we have another 15 minute tea break. So I thought, OK, well, sometimes I think the morning one seems to take a long time ticking round. Usually by 10 o'clock, I'm thinking, you know, I could do with a nice cuppa now. So taking in my bottled water has been really good because it means I can have a little slurp. And then... I'm still drinking the same amount of tea though, tea and coffee. Um, I'm just drinking more. <laughs> but I'm still, you know, drinking more water, so I think that's still good. Okay, I think that is all the number twos done. <laughs> um, let's have a look, what shall I do next? Okay, let's do these C's. This bright, bright yellowy green got quite a few different colours in here because I spilt some on the carpet so the majority of them were this colour so I picked them up and put them in this pot so now I've got those out how annoying is it when you do that but luckily it wasn't too many that fell. Pop those aside. Okay, let's get some of these bright greeny yellows in.
They really do brighten up this little tree here. It's surprising just what these little bits of detail do. It's okay, Monty. Look, it just, ooh, just brings it into a different level, doesn't it? They say in the garden that if you use a yellow, it brings the yellow forward, so it gives your garden depth. I mean, I don't know how true that is, you know, but um, that's what they say on these gardening programs. If you've got a small garden, use some yellow, and then um, whatever's yellow will look closer, and whatever's green will look further away. So. I don't know, getting gardening tips from me now as well. <laughs> as I say, I've not, um, I've not designed my own garden as such. I just plant plants where I think they well, might look nice. <laughs> and then if they get too big, I'll dig them up again. <laughs> right. Oh, one thing I did want to point out was this bit here. Can you see these pretty little flowers with a sort of um, green centre and then the ABs around the side? Well, I don't quite know what's happening here. I did wonder whether I'd put the wrong colour down, but I haven't. Um, and now I'm thinking, well, it just looks like I've put the wrong colour down. So I think... I might, the problem is, if you look here, we've got one there and we've got one there. So I think maybe that one and that one needs changing out into a green, dark green. And then down here needs changing out. Just to put a bit more definition in this area, tell me what you think. Do you agree? I'm not going to do it yet, so I want to hear what your opinions are on that. Do you think it looks like I've made a mistake there? And would you change it out or would you leave it? Thank you, if you can let me know what you think. I'm just having a look at this, 934, number 55. I need to get some more of. Number 55. Mm, that's 56. Now, I've always done this this way, where I've had my extra spare bags in a pack beside me, 55. Um, but I won't have to do this much longer because I've got my new storage. Did you see my unboxing? <gasps> so what I do, I tip out quite a few, too many really to use all in one go. Still got quite a few in here, so I stick it back down again, put those aside, fill up my Tic Tac box and just leave a few in the tray to use. So that has always been my system. But now I've got this super storage that I'm so pleased to have. Um, it has different size containers. Yes. So be interesting when I kit up with those for the first time because for the first time I'll have to sort of contemplate the size of the packs before working out my symbols and things, I guess. Um, yeah, so it'll be a bit of a change for me. So this color is this dark green with the arrow, so that's the area I'm going to do next. Multi-placing. I don't think there's going to be much, if any, of the ABs in this section. We'll see, there might be some in here, I'm not quite sure. Um,
Thank you ever so much, everybody that likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the channel. Really do appreciate you and really love hearing from you and seeing what you're doing. I know that uh, one viewer is doing... Um, Quite a few events. Sorry, I was just trying to get rid of my... Stop talking, I was trying to get rid of my pink wax. Um, yeah, she's doing quite a few events all in one go. So working on all of those canvases at the same time and doing an amazing job of getting them um, sectioned and getting through those sections really quickly. Wow, amazing. So again, you might see her on Instagram. If you have Instagram, you might have might have seen that work being posted. Incredible. I'm really enjoying being on Instagram. I had an account for a while and never really did anything with it. And I'm still learning. I still, um, you know... I think I told the story about when I posted a picture of a packet and Ben thought it looked like I was some sort of drug dealer, um, which was actually to say I've now got an unboxing ready. <laughs> um, so I have learned a lot since then, but the story things don't really, I don't really understand. I know that they disappear after 24 hours. So why would you do a story and not post? I don't really get that um and then i think when you do a post is that a reel or is a reel something different so i don't really understand that either but basically i'm taking photos and posting them on there i haven't done any sort of videos on it or anything like that so I'll get there eventually i'm sure but i am enjoying being able to see what other people are doing because um, you can just quickly scroll through and it shows the photos and things like that. So I'm enjoying it for that. Like I say, I do find it's a really good space for filling in in between videos to show you pictures of where I'm up to or, um, you know, just things like that really. So talking about what I'm up to, today I'm obviously recording this whip and chat. I also have an unboxing. Yes, I do. And I set myself three different sets of criteria when looking for this diamond painting. So once I've done the unboxing, you'll be able to see that, I'm hoping later this week, and you'll see whether I succeeded in fulfilling the three different sets of criteria that I set. Um, one of which was that it was to be a website that I'd never ordered from before. All right, so that's a little teaser for you there <laughs> to watch out for later in the week. So if you're not subscribed, then please do subscribe so you don't miss out and don't find the video. Um, and if you are subscribed, obviously, I absolutely thank you wholeheartedly. Give me a little bit of a thrill. <laughs> um, it's nice to know that, you know, you feel I'm offering you something. And you all offer me lots and lots. So <laughs> if I can give back in any little way I can, then... To me, it's great. I love it. All right, we're going to go on to these dashes now, which are like a ready brown. Where is it? Mm -mm -mm. Here it is. Oh, I think I might need to get some more of those as well. Just find the code number 73. We find this as, as um, I get on with the canvas. 
it's getting to the stage where a lot of these colours will need filling up. I usually have them in number order, but for some reason these are absolutely everywhere. There it is, number 73. I love the bags when they have the DMC number on, just as another check, look, 3857. So Dreamer Designs is great for that. It's got the, the number and the DMC code on the bag. There is sometimes a little bit of static in these bags, but I have to say not much at all. Just needs a little bit of easing out sometimes when you get to the end of the bag. Got a little one there. Right, so we'll do the same again. We'll pop this in. Just keep some to work with. So that little bit of static, by the way, once it's there in the Tic Tac box, I don't really notice it after that. So there we go. And they sit really nicely. Now, there are a few that I have started. Look, I said in my last whip and chat, didn't I? I was going to get a green tray to put any junk in. Now, when I'm obviously I haven't got any yet. Um, so if I drop some. Um, and then I've moved on with the colour. I tend to keep it in a tray here. Can you see that? Yes, there. So I've got all sorts of bits in here. But what I'm going to do is sort out when it's actually junk and put it in this. So I can see this one here has a nobule on the side. Where's my camera? Um, so I'm going to discard that one because it won't sit flush. So that's my first bit of junk in that one. So that's what I've started doing so that by the end of this picture, you'll see what is proper junk rather than just lost diamonds. Oh, gosh, I made a right mess of that. <laughs> just sit them all into the right place. Because um, as I say, if I drop any, I tend to just normally keep them all together, but I want to be able to show you how many diamonds are actually discarded by me. Again, now this colour is creating a little bit of that depth because it's pushing this is like the background, isn't it? And it's pushing back and the trees coming forward. It is ever so clever. This diamond painting is quite unusual in the way that I can actually see what I'm, or the part of the picture that I'm working on. Um, the majority of the time, that's the case with this picture, whereas um, on other ones, you don't sort of see the area until you're finished and you stand back and you think, oh yes, there it is. But with this one, I can actually make out a tree, a cabin, a bush. <laughs> um, so that's quite nice. I still stand back and see more of the detail and think, oh wow, that looks fab, which we will be doing at the end of the video. I think that's it for the dashes. So let's do these right angles, which again is sort of a ready brown. 
Was the other one? Let's have a look. It was. Sorry, off camera there. Um, so they are next to each other in the colour chart. Look, 3857, 3858. So very, very similar. This one is just slightly lighter. We'll see when I put it down. Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there is a difference. <laughs> I did wonder with them being right next to each other, whether it would be worth changing colour, you know, but yes, you can tell the difference. It is worth the change. Have you ever done it? I've never asked this before. When you're working on a canvas and you put a colour away and there's one mist, do you ever think, oh, I'll just put this colour in instead? <laughs> now there's a question for you. Ooh, I wonder who's going to admit to that. <laughs> I think it would depend on the picture, wouldn't it? I think I might get away with that on parts of elation because it is so confetti heavy. I don't think you'd know. Um, <laughs> so that will be interesting. <laughs> Maybe that should be the next survey. Mm, I might do that as a survey. Have you ever listened to um, Virgin Radio? I love Virgin Radio. I listen to it on the way to work with Chris Evans. He always uplifts my day. I love it, the breakfast show. And then I listen to Gabby Roslin on the drive time when I'm coming home again. And when I'm diamond painting and not recording, I listen to it, to that as well. Um, so sometimes we're all, all different. There's Graham Norton, Steve um, Denyer, that's who I spoke to when I was on the radio. Yes, did you know I was on the radio? I put in a request for my viewers to play a song and um, yes, that was played one Sunday. Um, anyway, yes, so <laughs> what I was talking about was Gabby Roslin at Drive Time. She does like an Instagram survey every day about quarter to five-ish. Um, and it's a, usually a yes or no. So she'll ask, or an either or. So she'll ask a question and then you go onto Instagram and you put yes or no or the choice. What, what, whatever's posted that day. And uh, yeah, that's really fun. But I'm normally driving, so I don't get a chance to put my answer in. Because obviously you can't do that and drive. Naughty. So I was able to do that yesterday when I was off work and sitting here diamond painting. It was fun. She asked, um, garden gnomes, yes or no? Do you like garden gnomes? <laughs> so um, the majority came out as no. But it, well, I'll tell you what, it wasn't a high majority. I think it was only something like 56% said no. So pretty split, really. I thought it might be higher than that. Yeah, so that's good fun to join in with. But Chris Evans, I think Chris Evans is fab. Because say, he really, um, he really up uplifts me ready for the day on the morning. Right, I think I need some more number six, which is number... 3472 number 30. I think I can see that one. Yeah, that was easy to spot in that pack. Um,
I think this tray is just not deep enough. <laughs> I did have a little look, as you know, I think I've said that I've been looking at accessories and things. And I'd really like a diamond tray with a stopper on the end. But also, I think I'd like one with higher sides because, as you've just seen, when I put them in the tic-tac boxes, they, they um, spill over the edge because I do put quite a lot of them in. Maybe if I didn't put as many in to get them into the tic-tac boxes, I wouldn't have that problem. Um, so I heard of... Um, a seller on Etsy that was doing the stopper type trays, but unfortunately she doesn't post to the UK, um, which is a bit sad. So if you've any recommendations of people reasonably priced, I have to say, um, that do the diamond trays with stoppers and perhaps a higher side, I'd be really interested if you don't mind letting me know. Have I done that in the right? Oh, I just had a sudden thought. Yes, no, that was right. Because I've got some more of those up here. You know, when you suddenly think, oh, did I do the right number? I think I did that on my last whip and chat where I put a few down in the wrong place. I need to concentrate a little bit more. At least I didn't make a mistake that time. Okay. Hmm. Let's have a look. Okay, we're going to do these brown squares next. These ones here. Oh, I also wanted to mention as well about um, programs I've been watching. Now, I don't know if everybody gets this, so I'm hoping that you do. Otherwise, I'll just be speaking to people in the UK here. Mind you, I know, I think it's on BBC. So, um, who do you think you are is... It's like celebrities are finding out their ancestry and they delve into the family tree and they tell stories about their relatives and where they came from, what they did and all of that. And it's really interesting. I find it very fascinating and I've watched it on and off for years. And then recently... I watched one with Amanda Holden, you know, the Britain's Got Talent judge. And I was blown away that her ancestor started Battersea Dogs Home and she's an ambassador of that without even realising that um, one of her ancestors, I can't remember if it was granddad or great granddad or someone, had started the whole charity amazing and you know it really got me thinking about you know genes and what's passed down to us and things like that well I've been watching some more and I've been watching them sort of like on a catch-up so some of the series that I've been watching are quite old you might have seen them and I hope I don't give you any spoilers by talking about this next one but only yesterday I watched the one with Judy Dench Okay, if you want to watch it and you haven't yet, then skip forward because I don't want to give you any spoilers because it was incredible. Um, and it really, really got me thinking. So, Judy Dench had a brother who was an actor, or has, I'm not sure, I'll say has a brother who was an actor. And 
she went to see him on stage and she was so blown away by his performance and with Shakespeare that that's what she realised that she wanted to do. So then, you know, she went into training and things like that. And she has an absolute passion for Shakespeare. And her first acting role was um, Ophelia in Hamlet. Okay. So they traced back her family tree and she thought she was um, English all the way through. Um, well, it turns out that she has um, Dan uh, Danish heritage. So she was absolutely astounded by that. And I think she had Irish as well, if I remember rightly. Um, she had absolutely no idea. So off she went to Copenhagen and found out more about that side of her family. In revealing her Danish side, there was... I mean, it's incredible, the records that were kept, because it was something like the 1600s, it was recorded that one of her ancestors, I can't remember their name, but um, they had an actual portrait done of one of her ancestors. And in the background of the portrait was the family crest, one on one side and one on another. So um, they found this portrait of one of her ancestors, and he was a nobleman. And he had children with a lady who wasn't nobility. So he wasn't allowed to marry her and he wasn't allowed to give the um, children his name. So basically they were illegitimate children. But obviously they must have loved each other because, you know, he recognised his children. In his eyes, they were his children, which sometimes didn't happen in those days. And in the portraiture, there was a crest of, I don't know if it was his maternal or paternal side, but then on the other side, it was supposed to be an oak tree. However, it was cut down because of this problem. And instead, they depicted a little oak sapling. Well, when Judy Dench heard this, she sort of gasped in shock because she said that they use that in their own family now, a little oak. Um, so she was surprised by that small detail. But then it went on to say... Um, I've got to get, I'm trying to get this right with family relationships. I think it was his, it might have been his brother had a child. So it was her great, seven times great uncle or something like that, who was this really famous astronomer. And he had been depicted in a tapestry by King somebody. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, I should remember. I think it was King James, maybe. I'm so sorry that I don't remember the tiny details. You must watch it. <laughs> so he was depicted in this tapestry because he was a famous astronomer and had written a very famous book. And his mother worked as the lady-in-waiting for... The Queen. I'm sure that's right. Gosh, forgive me if I'm getting these slight details wrong. <laughs> um, and basically, what they had was a pot, this tapestry, and in the background was the castle where his mother waited on the royal family. And there was also a letter about some travelling entertainers from United Kingdom visiting this castle 
Now, Judy Dench was absolutely blown away because one of the people, one of the entertainers, was friends with William Shakespeare. And William Shakespeare had used some of the names that he'd seen or heard of, not sure which, depicted in the tapestries and the portraiture and the crests around the portraits of these people, including the castle. So the castle was set in one of his um, novels, and I think it was Hamlet. So one of Judy Dench's ancestors lived in the castle where William Shakespeare had set his book, Hamlet, and she had her first acting role on the stage in Hamlet and absolutely adored Shakespeare. So I was absolutely blown away by this. And honestly, if you haven't seen it, you must watch it because there are all sorts of other little details that just resonated for her and just little sayings and things like that. And it was just astonishing. And it really got me thinking about um, what we bring to the table from our ancestors that we have absolutely no idea about. And it really does make you want to look back at your own family history to see you know, what path should you be on? What should you be doing in life? What lessons are there to be learned? Why do we do things a certain way? What, you know, it's absolutely fascinating. And I don't know if it would be that easy to do without the experts behind, um, you know, they're so knowledgeable, aren't they, these people? To try and do it on your own, I'm not sure how far you would get with the actual depth of the stories. Yes, you'd be able to find birth, death, marriage certificates. Um, but to get more detail um, and to, you know, put meat on the bones, as it were, uh, would probably take quite a long time if you were able to do it by yourself at all. I just, there's got to be something in it. There's got to be something about connections in the past that relate to people now. There just has to be. I just firmly believe that, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's kind of reincarnation perhaps, or whether there's just something that we bring that we just know without knowing how we know. And then these, things that just cannot be coincidences. They just can't be coincidences. And it's mind-blowing. I find it incredible. So I'm loving watching these programmes. What do you think? <laughs> I know I probably haven't described the programme very well at all. Um... But I've done my best. <laughs> I don't know Shakespeare's works and things like that, but there was definitely a castle in Hamlet, and that was the name of the of the place where Judy Dench's family um, lived as courtiers. It's astonishing, just astonishing. And this old document that they brought out, oh, Amazing. Who would have thought in the 1600s that they would be able to document the way that they did? And it just makes you think about how we document our lives nowadays because we don't really... I'm so sorry about Monty today. We don't print off pictures anymore, do we? We take things digitally and... Um, Will our future ancestors, do you call them ancestors in the future? 
our future relatives, shall we say, just in case. <laughs> um, you know, how will they find out about what we did and things like that? And will they be able to find photographs, videos? Um, you know, how will their research take place if we don't print off our photographs? I don't know. Cloud storage, you know, it may well be a lot easier for them to find out the history of us when they want to. I mean, sometimes I think they unearth secrets that I don't know if people would be very happy that were unearthed. <laughs> sometimes some things were really well hidden within the family and then they come along and expose it. Yeah. It's fascinating stuff. And I think it's also things like, um, you know, when it's somebody like mum or dad, you see them as mum or dad. You don't necessarily think about the story behind the people when they're that close to you. Mum often tells us stories about when she was little and how they lived and things like that and about grandma. Uh, so it is also important to hear that while you can pick up these little bits of information. Oh dear. Oh Monty. Honestly, he is trying to be settled. He's just on edge. Poor little doggy dog. And I don't really want to lock him in the other room because he needs to be around somebody. <laughs> Even though I'm not paying him any attention whatsoever. That's probably part of the problem. I will later though. So don't worry about him, he will be fine. It's just a little bit annoying for us at the moment. <laughs> right, I'm going to do the arrow next. Look how this bush is now forming with that little bit of yellow picked out. Is it bringing it closer to the, <laughs> to the foreground, having that yellow in like my theory earlier? a little bit like a timer but not quite nice bright orange it's like um, around the edge here as well I'd love to be able to name these plants for you I think this one Kind of reminds me of apple blossom. Um, no, it's not as apple blossom, is it? Is it orange blossom? The choisia. That's what they call the plant, choisia. It kind of reminds me of one of those. Right, we'll go on to this symbol here. See that there? It's like the, <laughs> oh, what was it called? Neptune's uh, trident, that was it. Thank you, Anthea, because I remembered about your dents and three dents <laughs> to get trident. <laughs> 
because I couldn't remember it during the kitting up video. It was like, you know, Neptune's fork or whatever I'd said. Um, and Anthea said, well, it's easy to remember when it's three holes are put into people. A bit gruesome, but it, I did remember it by that. <laughs> Word association, isn't it, to help uh, remember? work out if that is part of the same bush because I can't quite tell that at the moment. Whether it's another one. Hmm. I'll find out when I stand back. finish this bush by putting in those drunk equals symbol. to see look I was doing so well I'll quickly pop that in use my hand and turn it over right let's do these pink swirls oh this is a pretty pink it's like a very pale Coral salmon colour. Probably could have multiplied this bit. Let's do that. sets in. And then I think the majority of the bushes are done. That didn't take long at all, did it? Considering I've kept stopping as well to calm Monty down throughout. <laughs> Don't worry, I will cut as much as I can out of embarking because it can be a little bit irritating. 
but we love our little animals. Right, let's do number three. Did I do number three before? I think I did. I must have missed those as well. Just two. Sat there. I'm not quite sure what they add. I'm sure they add something. When I stand back, I'll be like, oh, yes, that's why they're in there. Okay. Should we do this part here? This swirl with the purple three dots. And this is one of those antique type dusty colours. Oh, I've got a little bit of sunshine just beneath. Don't know if that's on camera. No, it isn't. It's near my cover minder. I'm just getting a little sparkle. Very, very pretty. It might move up so that you can see. Well, depends on the sun. This must be part of the stream, this little narrow bit. It's quite hard to tell because it could... Yes, I think it is. I think it is part of the stream. But it might not be. <laughs> it might be a pathway. Could be, couldn't it? Because it's leading to the cabin. So you wouldn't want to walk out of a cabin straight into the stream, would you? So... Um, yeah, I'm going to change my mind and say it's a pathway. Um, we'll do Q. Q. Well, you might want to um, walk out of the cabin into the water. I mean, they used to do that in castles with their moats. You just have to build a bit of a bridge over it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is the colour of water in parts. Okay, I'm going to do these zeros with a line through. Oh, this is this is pink, so I don't. I'm, no, I'm back to a path. <laughs> yeah, I think this will be the colours of a pathway. You know, like um. You get the different colours on cobbles and things like that. Really pretty. I think that's what this is going to be. I'm not sure if it is cobbles though, but um, you know what I mean, like the paving stones or... Because if you remember, I did say this canvas has slightly different colours. To me, that looks a bit more blue than this pinky colour. It's a very pretty colour though. Okay, let's get the peas in. one of these chalky antique colours. There. 
you imagine having a cabin like this? Oh, set within these lovely gardens with a stream running by. Wouldn't that be amazing? Beautiful. Of course, I think, mm, would you get a lot of midges? <laughs> it's all right having water near your house, but would you get lots of biting gnats and midges around, flying around, you know? <laughs> I'm only saying that because I'd be ever so jealous if anybody lives in a house or a cabin near water because it would be idyllic. There's got to be some sort of payoff for that type of uh, environment. <laughs> if you do live somewhere like that, please invite me over. I'd love to come and see. <laughs> I promise I wouldn't outstay my welcome. <laughs> Well, I maybe shouldn't promise that because it might take quite a bit to get rid of me if it's so beautiful. Just one more sleep. I thought I'd be able to easily get them out, but no. They're a little bit stuck together, those ones. And as I don't need many, I don't need to sort them out right now. So, sort those out another time. Okay, we have these two. Oh my goodness, two little white ABs. So after all of this section, we might only have two ABs going in right at the bottom here. I'm sure they must come to, uh, look, that one's got a nobule on, so I'll junk that one. Um, I'm sure they must continue along somewhere because it would be a bit random just to put two right there. Okay, we're going to do the R's. Back into the greens again for the other side of that pathway. And we're getting quite close to finishing this section now. That seems to have zoomed today. I haven't looked at the I haven't looked at the time on the clock, and to be honest, because I've been um, stopping to deal with Monty, I'm not sure what time I'm on. Anyway, we'll keep going to finish this section. I don't think I'm going to get into any more of the section here, unfortunately, but at least we'll finish one. Oh, I did want to talk to you about um, a video I'd seen and I, I really was tempted to record it to play, but it's not my video. I can't claim rights for it. I thought it would be too difficult with the copyright laws. Um, so you can catch it on Viral Hog and it's called... <laughs> Should I tell you what it's called first or shall I tell you the story? No, I'll tell you the story first and I'll tell you what it's called. It came up on my Facebook page and it, honestly, it was so funny. It's a little magpie hopping along a wall and there's a cat on the path below. And the little magpie hops off the wall behind the cat. The cat starts walking off and the, and the magpie hops along behind it. The cat turns round and it's like the magpie looks away as if to say, there's nothing to see here. And the cat turns back round and carries on walking and the, and the I keep wanting to say stone magpie. <laughs> and the magpie hops behind it 
and the cat turns round and the magpie jumps around again and looks away as if to say I'm not here you can't see me if I can't see you oh my goodness honestly this magpie follows the cat all the way down the path it's so funny and the cat just like what do you want <laughs> the magpie's like who are you talking to? Not me. I'm not here. I can't see you. Oh, this mischievous little magpie. It's so cute. I loved it. It was just the character of the magpie was so funny. And the cat was just like, whatever. <laughs> so try and catch it on Viral Hog. It's called Magpie Stalks Cat. <laughs> And have a little watch. It's not a very long video, only a minute or so. I really wish that I could have um, put it on my channel for you to see. But never mind. I thought I better not because it's not my... You know, I didn't make it so I can't claim it. But oh, it was perfect. <laughs> I wonder if it did that very often because for somebody to manage to catch that on camera is quite extraordinary really if it if it was a one off amazing it might be that that happens every day and this cat is just so annoyed with the bird following it every day I don't know This pink is beautiful as well. Look, this must be a start of another bush coming into view. So we've only got this little bit of cabin left to finish here. I think I did miss one of those squares as well. I'll quickly pop that in. Then we've got, um, see, things like that. I don't bother trying to find the thing. I'll just pop it in the other tray. And then if I need that colour at the end, I've got those to hand. All right, I'm going to do this dot 3371. Very, very, very dark brown. Can you see the sunshine here? I think you might be able to. The twinkling that I am getting in that sunshine there is astounding. I really hope that you can pick it up on the camera. It's just a little sunburst through and it's hitting that yellow, nearly blinding me. So clean, gorgeous, love it. Right, I wasn't going to put any up here, but I'm going to because that finishes that side absolutely perfectly then. Sometimes with the release papers, um, it's probably me because I haven't been using them that long, but sometimes I don't put the whole... Um, Oh, what am I trying to say? I don't edge it right to the line, so sometimes my diamonds overlap it a little bit. I 
think it's probably just lack of practice that, but um, if I'm not sure, then I just, I leave it ready for the next section, but they are okay. One more diamond to place, and then we can have a look at the further off view. Okay, here is the view from further away, and look at the detail we've now got in this picture. Oh, I love it. The cabin with its windows and the warmth shining through there, so welcoming. And I'm really looking forward to getting the bottom of that finished. The tree in this left-hand corner is one of my favourites. I love that with the details of the leaves. And this tree here, another one of my favourites. I really enjoy the trees in this picture. They're just different. They're different shapes, they're different colours. I think they've done it really well. The spring blossom tree, here we are. We've got most of the blossom in, I think. Just got the trunk perhaps to go here and then the right hand corner with look a deer and the little spots on the deer are a b diamonds so that is so cute i loved it when i saw it and it's got like a little black eye there it's lovely can you see this one here as well this one blends in a bit more the closer you get you hardly see this one and no spots but look at that little face facing forward and it's just three dark diamonds that create that detail in there there's another little deer here look with its head down eating the grass and again some spots so they are lovely and we've got the rocks there so the detail, I think, is being picked up by the diamonds much more than what you would think with the canvas. I will show you another view to show you just how much I've got left to do on this diamond painting. Once this row is finished, I think I'm nearly about halfway there with this canvas. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what detail is picked out in the diamonds here because I think it's going to look quite different to what it looks like without the diamonds on, judging by the top half. What do you think? Do you think it looks very different? I think it's something to do with the colourways not being identical to the symbols. I am really enjoying working on this canvas by Dreamer Designs. Again, the details for this kit is in the description below and if you've not ordered from them before follow the link and save 15%. It is an affiliated code and it does give me a little bit of money back from the company just so that you're aware of that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's Whip and Chat. I do hope that you enjoy your own diamond painting and I'll see you next time. Take care everybody. Bye!